morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of Voice of Radio. So today, we're going to be taking a look at the buy list for the new expansion of the Pokemon trading card game, Cosmic Eclipse. This is where I tell you which cards you need to have so that you can go ahead and make whatever deck you like. Now, I have tried to make it a little bit shorter than usual after a bit of feedback from you lovely ladies and gentlemen. And my usual rules still hold here. Stuff like Excadrill, for instance. You might really want to make an Excadrill deck. That's fine. But I don't think everyone needs to go and buy a playset of Excadrill. Similarly, GXs and Tag Team GXs tend to be quite expensive. So it's a kind of buy them if you really want to play them kind of thing. I am going to suggest a couple in this video that you should go out and get, but that is because I think they are going to be staples in a bunch of decks. Now, there are ones like Reshiram and Zekrom, and like the Creation Trio, Arceus and Dialga and Palkia, that are very good cards that are going to make very good decks. I do think these are two you should consider... But by the same token, they are decks in and of themselves. So if you want to play the deck, buy them. If you don't, don't. But they are the two tag teams from the set, which are likely to get very expensive. So if you wait to buy them, you might find yourself paying a little bit over the odds. So having a look at the Pokemon then, I think everybody needs two to four copies of Sawsbuck. Sawsbuck, you see, has got a lovely ability. Once during your turn, you may draw a card. It's not phenomenal, but it's decent Pokemon draw. It's seen a fair bit of play over in Japan. It does not make it into every deck, but it makes it into enough that I think you might need a couple copies of it. One to two copies of Buzzwall. This is a really nice tech in grass decks. One grass, one colorless energy, do 60 heal 30 seems underwhelming, but your ability says that you do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon for each prize card that you have taken. That is to say, it's a pretty nice card to put into grass decks. Now, a couple copies of Charizard and Brakeson will do you really well. I know that it is a tag team, but... It's going to be pretty much a staple in Reshiram and Charizard decks. It's going to make its way into a lot of Mewtwo and Mew decks. It is going to be a very widely played card in a few different decks. The main attraction here is 4 energy. You do 180 damage, but you then search your deck for 3 cards and put them into your hand. Frankly, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to see play and it is going to see quite a bit of success the price of this is only likely to go up one to two copies of entei entei is going to be a nice little tech in fire decks if you had a pokemon ko'd the previous turn you do 120 for two energy that is a welder frankly ladies and gentlemen it's the kind of thing where you may well want to put it into pretty much any welder deck you might not but you might, and for that reason, I think you need to have a couple copies of it lying around in your binder, essentially ready to go when you need it. I also think you should probably go and get yourselves a couple copies of the new Victini. This heals 20 damage from one of your bench Pokemon. I know not everyone will agree with me here, and as with all of these, if you don't agree with me with a particular choice, don't go and buy it. I shan't be personally offended, but it's one of those whereby... If you're playing any kind of healing deck, this is just going to be too good to pass up. And you don't know in the next two to three years what kind of healing decks you're going to be playing. One to two copies of Fione. It's the card that just stops you decking out. It was also a pre-release promo, incidentally. The thing about Fione is that you can put it on the bottom of your deck and then make your opponent swap their active Pokemon. Now, they get a choice of what they swap, but they still have to swap. That alone is pretty good. But you also get to put it on the bottom of your deck, which basically guarantees you'll never deck out. It's a kind of Pokemon that's going to see a fair amount of play, so it's one you need to start taking a little bit seriously. 
four copies of Raichu. Now, again, if you don't want to play this, don't buy it. But this is likely to be a pretty hyped deck coming out of Cosmic Eclipse. Using your Nuzzle Pokemon like a Molga that searches out Pokemon with Nuzzle. And Pachirisu that accelerates the energy round. You then do for a single energy... 20 damage for each energy on the field. If you don't think it's going to be a good deck, don't get it, but I could see the price of Raichu rising. Magneton is another one that's going to find its way into a lot of decks. You can KO it, and yes, that does mean giving up a prize, but you then search your deck for free supporter cards, reveal them, and put them into your hand. Well, there's a very good chance that one of those three is going to be Lieutenant Surge's strategy. So you play that one, and then that allows you to play the other two cards that you went and searched. Yeah, basically means you can go and search three supporters, one of them surge, and then you play the other two right away. Of course, it does have some fairly strong competition from Miss Magius, and Miss Magius does have Dust Stone, which allows it to evolve up straight away, but I could see this making its way into an awful lot of decks. Coughing and Weezing both have the same ability. If they are discarded using Roxy, you put one damage counter on each of your opponent's Pokemon. But I think Roxy is going to see a fair amount of play. And if you're playing Roxy, you've got to consider these. I think everyone should have a play set of each. Now, Duskull is a common. It's going to be very, very cheap. But I think you need a copy or two lying around because I adore the ability. Essentially, you can discard three cards from your hand, then search your deck for a card that evolves from it and evolve it. Really, though, for a lot of decks, it's just discard three cards from your hand. And if you're playing a deck that plays from the discard pile, whether it's Malamar to discard energy so you can accelerate it, or Zoroark so that you're doing more damage for each Pokemon in the discard, whatever it might be, this is going to help you. Any deck that plays from the discard should be considering this. One copy of Oracorio GX, this is likely to become a very expensive card. If you had a Pokemon KO during your opponent's previous turn, Draw three cards. Now, it doesn't stack, so you never really need more than one. And the attack's terrible. Well, both of them are terrible. But this is a one-off in a lot of decks over in Japan. It will be here as well. It's only a one-off, but you should still expect this to be a rather expensive card. And I would try and get yourself a copy of this sooner rather than later. One copy of Mimikyu. The ability basically says that each damaged Pokemon GX has no ability. It is a great, great alternative to Power Plant, except your opponent can't just play their own stadium to get rid of it. I love Mimikyu. It is going to really be nice in a whole bunch of decks. One to two copies of Blacephalon, which interestingly enough, was also a pre-release promo. For two energy... Bearing in mind you can use B-String or Malamar, so really don't worry about it. You drop four damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way that you like. That is, shall we say, just a little bit underwhelming. But, if instead of that, your opponent has exactly three prize cards remaining, you drop 12 damage counters instead, and that, ladies and gentlemen, will make quite a big difference. One or two copies of Alolan Persian. Again, I know it's a GX, but it's got an ability which gives it immunity from Tag Team Pokemon, Ultra Beast, and any Pokemon with special energy attached. It sneaks its way into a whole bunch of different decks. It's brilliant as a tech, and I do think you need a copy or two lying around. And now I know this one's a tag team, but you need a couple copies of Megalopony and Jigglypuff. Megalopony and Jigglypuff is a phenomenal card that has already seen a huge amount of play over in Japan. For free colorless energy, you do 60 damage base, and then 60 more for each of your opponent's Pokemon EX and GX. And even though it's free energy, it works great with any kind of welder deck or any kind of other energy acceleration. This is in a huge amount of decks I've seen already in Japan, and you can expect it to be in a huge amount of decks over here. This is one of those ones that makes it onto the buy list, because I think it's going to become much more expensive as time goes by. And frankly, you're better off just getting it now.
One to two copies of Beware. It reduces your retreat cost. It's fun. I want a couple copies of it. And two to four copies of Silv Ally. Once again, I am fully aware that it's a GX, but it's got an ability that lets you draw till you got five cards in your hand and an attack that does 120 for two colorless energy. It is startlingly similar to Zoroark, and it's already seen a lot of play in Japan. It, it goes well with a whole bunch of different Pokemon. Expect it to see a lot of play. Expect the price to go up. And I would get it sooner rather than later. Now, as we move into the trainers, you know my rule. Generally speaking, try and get a place out of everything just in case. So, Beast Knight then. Beast Knight lets all of your Ultra Beasts do an extra 10 damage for each prize card that you have taken. Well, if you ever want to play an Ultra Beast deck, you need to consider it. Belalba and Bryson Man is a mill deck in and of itself. It is seeing a lot of play over in Japan as a mill deck. It is great as a mill deck, but it also wrecks particular decks. Excadrill works best when you've got three or fewer cards left in your deck. This will deck them out and you'll win. Oranguru wants to have a very small deck of cards, often free because that's how many they put back with resource management. One of these they deck out, they lose. Behem wants to try and have a very small deck. Honestly, a lot of the time, the best option here is just having one Elgium, one Behem, one Triple Acceleration Energy. Oh look, that's three cards. Balalba and Bryson Man will make them deck out. Even if you're not decking these decks out and just winning instantaneously, you're still discarding resources and potentially putting your opponent in a position from which they will not recover. This is a phenomenal card. You need a playset. Chaotic Swell is a wonderful stadium that is basically just a counter stadium. You put it down and then if your opponent plays a stadium, you discard it without it doing anything. Kind of thing you need a playset of. If you don't know what stadium to play, this is often the answer to that question. Four copies of Clay discard the top seven cards of your deck. Put all the item cards revealed this way into your hand. Phenomenal for speed item lists. You need a playset of them. For Cynthia and Caitlin, you put a supporter card from your discard pile into your hand. And then you can... At the same time, discard a card from your hand and draw three cards. It's brilliant. It's seeing a huge amount of play over in Japan. You are definitely going to want a play set of it. Similarly, Great Catcher will become the best gusting option we've got. It will be better than Custom Catcher. And in a lot of decks, it will just replace Custom Catcher. Discard two cards from your hand. Swap one of your opponent's Pokemon EX or GX from the bench with their active. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Guzma and Hala searches for a stadium card, but if you discard two cards from your hand, you also search for a Pokemon tool and a special energy. I mean, in a lot of decks, if you can grab a stadium tool and special energy, that's what you need to really get rolling. A lot of decks will love this. Four copies of Island Challenge Amulet. It reduces your maximum HP by 100 but it also means you give up one less prize if KO'd by damage from an opponent's Pokemon's attack. Now, it's banned and expanded because with Jirachi EX, it was literally breaking the game. But make no mistake, it's still very good in standard. You should have two to four copies of this. Expect to see it popping up in a lot of decks. Four copies of Lana's Fishing Rod. It's the best item Pokemon recovery we've got. It's also Pokemon Tool Recovery, which we literally don't have at the moment. And for both of those reasons, you need a bunch. Lily's Full Force doesn't see that much play, but it's still one we want to take a little bit seriously. You draw three cards now, and then if you've got three or more cards in your hand at the end of your turn, you just return cards back to your deck until you have two left in hand. Still a good draw card, still one that's likely to see play. Lily's Pokedoll, on the other hand, has been seeing a lot of play. You play it as a 30 HP Pokemon, except it doesn't actually give up any prizes when it's KO'd. So you leave it in the active to buy yourself a little bit of time. You make your opponent waste attacks, etc. Really good, especially in any deck that needs a bit of time to set up. Of course, there are some decks out there that literally aim to just recover this over and over again. Think something like Florges, so that your opponent literally just decks out because they never take any prizes.
Mallow and Lana's another one you want four copies of. You switch your active Pokemon, and then you may discard two cards from your hand and heal 120 from the Pokemon you switched out. Cool. Misty and Lorelei lets you search for five water energy, that's fine. But if you discard five cards from your hand, it also lets you use a water GX attack. Even if you've used a GX attack, that's phenomenal. End Resolve, I think again you need four copies of this. Discard the top six cards of your deck and attach all the energy to one of your dragon Pokemon. It's awesome. It's great in any dragon deck. You need four copies of Professor Oak's setup. Search your deck for three basic Pokemon with different types. Put them on your bench. It's good, frankly. It can get any basics, just so long as the three of them are all different types. Four copies of Red and Blue. You search for a Pokemon that evolves from one of your Pokemon, as long as it's a GX. Evolve it up, and then if you discard two cards from your hand, you search for two basic energy and attach them. Any Stage 1 GX deck, from now until this rotates, really needs to consider this. Roller Skater, you discard a card from your hand and draw two, but you may discard an energy instead, and then draw four. It's a good draw card. You need all the draw cards you can get. Rosa only works if one of your Pokemon was KO'd during your opponent's last turn, but you search your deck for a Pokemon, a trainer card, that's any trainer, not just item, and basic energy, put them into your hand. Great in single prize decks where you're having a few more Pokemon KO'd. Roxy lets you discard two Pokemon from your hand and draw three cards for each one discarded. Now, we mentioned coughing and wheezing earlier, but even if you're not playing coughing and wheezing, Roxy's still a good draw card, and all these draw cards, you need four of them because you never know what deck you're going to be playing in the future. They might end up being the perfect option. Four copies of Tag Call because, well, I've told you about multiple different tag team Pokemon and tag team supporters. This lets you search for any two of them. That's pretty good. Will lets you fix the result of any coin flip during your game. You're probably not going to do that all the time, so you might only need a couple, but I'd say two to four to be safe. And then four copies of draw energy. When you attach it, you draw a card. Maybe it's just a lovely little draw engine in Porygon Z decks, because Porygon Z lets you attach as many special energy during your turn as you like. Or maybe it's just... A handy little extra card here or there. Either way, it's going to make its way into a bunch of decks, so you should have a bunch of them. And there we go. Now, there's probably going to be other Pokemon that you want. I'm going to go and buy four copies of Alolan Ninetales, four copies of Excadrill, and four copies of Steelix, because those are decks which I think are going to be pretty gosh darn good. But I don't expect everyone to do that, because I don't expect everyone to agree with me. But this list should get you started and give you everything you need to make most decks, and then you might need to just go and get your main attackers, because you know what? You don't need all of every attacker. Figure out what you want to play. Go get them. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I think, but I'd like to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash wassyplays, where we talk about a whole bunch of games that don't even have any Pokemon in. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would you? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.